Good evening, folks. Uh, my name is Mike Ballancourt. I am coming in out of the bullpen as uh, chair for the Zoning Board of Appeals this evening. Uh, I want to uh, call the meeting to order. This is the uh, Tuesday, June 27, 2017, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Uh, first, I'd like to address approval of the minutes of the May 23, 2017 meeting. Uh, Mike, can I ask, maybe we should table that uh, in as much as there are only three of us here today who are at that uh, meeting? Sure. I, any uh, opposition, opposition to that? Very good. We will table then the approval of the minutes of May 23rd. Uh, on to old business. We have no old business. And moving on in the agenda then very rapidly, uh, we will hear the request of Kevin Brown, representing Gregory and Alice Eaton, who are the owners of 5 C Barn Road, uh, with their application to replace an existing non-conforming structure on that property. Uh, before we get to the applicants, uh, Benjamin McDougall is here with us this evening as, uh, as our uh, zoning liaison, a code enforcement officer. Uh, ben, would you care to offer some comments on the application? Sure. Uh, Kevin Brown came to me several months ago to discuss the reconstruction of a single family dwelling at 5 C Barn Road. The house is, the existing house was within 75 feet of the normal high water line of the ocean and they were unable to uh, propose to replace the house more than 75 feet back so I informed them that this was the process for that for the zoning board to determine greatest practical extent based on 1944b3 of the zoning ordinance. So here we are. Right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Brown. Hi. Hi. Kevin Brown, Kevin Brown Architecture, here representing uh, Alice and Greg Eaton um, with their property at 5C Barn Road. Um, as Ben said, we are looking to replace um, the structure that's currently there. The footprint of the house, of the new proposed house, is very similar to the old, um, slightly different in some areas, but very much following the existing footprint of uh, where it sits on the site. And there's, there's various reasons that we're sort of proposing to, to try to keep it where it is, um, mostly because the biggest reason, I think, is the setback, the septic system. Where the septic is located is tucked in the corner as, close, as far as we can get it without impeding on, there's a drainage swale over in this area. So we've talked, we've had a septic design done by um, Frick and Associates in terms of where that can be best located. And you can see the, on the site plan, the existing septic is currently in that back corner, the closest it could be. And with the proposed one, we've decided we're, we're making the house slightly bigger. It's an existing six bedroom house. We're proposing a, an eight bedroom house um, over the existing footprint, really. So the, the, very, the, the ground floor plan is essentially maybe 38 square feet bigger than the footprint. And it's mostly back in, in this area. The, the, but the septic is really dictating where this, the footprint of the house can be located, being the 20 feet off of the septic field, which the new proposed septic field is here. Um, so that's one of the guiding uh, things that have been located, figuring out where the location of the house could be on the site. Um, the other, some of the other reasons, and you'll notice that the existing footprint of the house and the new proposed footprint, we actually have less volume and square footage within the 75 foot um, area. Um, we, the other reason we can't really move it back too far is this encroachment in the side setback that where the existing house is, by moving that back, we'd be more non-conforming on the side setback um, if, we, if we slid it back. The other thing we're doing with the new design is You'll see that the existing garage, which is this dashed area over in here of the footprint, is actually in the side setback as well. So we're actually canting that a little bit to get, make it more conforming with, within the building envelope. Um, some of the other guiding factors that we've been sort of 
try and keep the, the footprint where it is, is currently there's a lot of ledge underneath the house. There's an existing basement under this portion of the house. And the goal is to, the new house will have a, a, a basement in that same area without getting into the need for ledge removal and, and blasting being close to the neighbors. Um, some of the other, you know, the, it's a tired old house. You can see in some of the pictures, it's been added on to many years. And there's different floor levels. And certainly, you know, there's this end of the house, it's like different levels than the rest of the house. So we're trying to really create a house that's, you know, much nicer for the community in terms of the looks and um, just making it, giving it that New England character is the goal with the new design and it, making it a much more efficient house and dealing with all the floor level changes but making it all a level floor on both floors. Um, with the new house, you'll see in the existing pictures, the front of the house is the tallest and that will be the way that the new house is. Um, I had some elevations in the packet. The, the very front part is the tallest part of the house. The garage currently is, is a one-story garage. We will be adding um, space above the new wing of the new house, but not to the full height that we have in the front of the house. We're trying to keep, we're not, we don't want it to be as, it's going to be a story and a half versus two stories, like the front of the house. Um, so, so those are some of the factors that we've sort of brought in, you know, and we're concerned with some of the views with the, behind the neighbors behind. I have actually chatted with the neighbor, Connie, the neighbor today, about the, uh, the potential for views being blocked. And by sliding the house back, it lifted up in elevation a little bit and be a little bit closer to, to her view um, and in, you know, potentially impacting that. The one, the, the view corridor that she had mentioned she, had, she has is down along the left side of the house currently. And we're really not any closer to that. We can't be any closer to that because we're already in, you know, we're basically rebuilding the new house over the existing footprint um, in, in that area. The one, the one things that have, you know, and we're, we're going to be developing a landscape plan as well as we go further along and developing, figuring out what, you know, how to make the landscape better. Because it sounds like some of the landscaping is some of the issue that it's impeding her view right now. So we're sensitive to sort of the view factors from the neighbors and wanting to, you know, try to take that feedback and use it to our best as we get into it. And Sarah Whitty from uh, Sarah Whitty with Landscape Architects can talk more about sort of um, the landscape features and a little bit more about the septic. Um, I think for the most part, I think, I think that, you know, we're trying to keep the, the footprint where it is to preserve the existing swales on the, on the site and things, and things like that. But again, the septic was one of the bigger factors in the blasting. Um, so I, you know, I can hand it over to Sarah and then we can have questions. Hi, uh, Sarah Whitty, landscape architect. And I just wanted to emphasize a few things about the, um, the site design. As Kevin mentioned, the parameters really were those setbacks and the uh, existing levels of non-conforming coverage, et cetera, not to exceed um, what we have and to work within those, those guidelines. Um, the type of the septic system that we're going to see put in here, um, if we go ahead with this, would be um, a more efficient system. There'll be a pre-treatment um, component to it, so that uh, reduces the, the bed area that's required, and then there'd be uh, concrete chambers and so forth. So, they're spending a little extra to get the smaller footprint um, system and again lowering the impact on that. And I just wanted to mention again about the trees. There's one, um, do you have the site plan? Andy's on the back one of these. Things. Great. So there's a um, site plan in your packets and uh, we aren't positive, we kind of hope we'll be able to save this really one, this one nice tree that's out in front is at the end of, the, uh, of this uh, drive cul-de-sac and it's kind of an important piece that gives kind of scale to the, to the um, house and, and a nice entry. But more importantly, uh, actually, um, you know, when you are in within 250 feet of the shoreland, which is our 250 line is way back here, um, every tree counts. Um, so uh, if, we'd have, if we have to take it down, then we'd have to replace it with something else. And sometimes the replacement trees have more impact on a view than the tree, the old tree that's there, right? Because it's gracious and tall, it has a trunk and a high canopy. And 
Um, so if we have, if we lose that tree during construction, and nobody never guarantee what will happen with a tree during construction. But if we do lose it, we'll would replace it and uh, and try not to make any great impact on the view that you know to take away anybody's views. Um, that would be something would be sensitive to. There's a couple of other pretty special trees out here in front, you know, trunks like this. Um, so those would be protected during construction. And I've worked on a lot of projects where that is, um, you know, uh, really important. And so what we do is we put, you know, construction fence or something around the tree eight feet out because otherwise I see people leaning their scaffolding and their sheetrock and their, you know, pouring their extra concrete at the base of the tree, <laughs> things like that. Um, in terms of the site design, um, uh, we, there's currently a, a loop driveway that comes through like that around this little island with that tree. We're trying to simplify things so we just have one narrow, narrow entrance coming in and out of this three car garage. Um, a simple walk up to the front. There's a patio out here now which we would um, work with and definitely not, we might make it a little smaller, we can't make it bigger. There's an area of patio out here which wasn't included in the in the permit, so we're pulling that out. Um, uh, and then we have some grade changes down to a, a daylight basement here. Um, so it's pr pretty straightforward. Um, uh, this existing wall, um, it has some uh, foundation drains through it and things like that. So we'll, uh, we'll just work with all of the existing infrastructure that we can, again, to minimize uh, damage to the trees and the roots and the, and the, uh, and the stability of the site. Uh, those were the items I wanted to mention, so if you have any questions, be happy to answer. Thanks. Thank you both. Uh, questions for the applicants? For, 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 yeah. the, for the presenters, doesn't necessarily need to be you. <laughs> Ma'am, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, could you uh, approach the, the podium? Um, and could you identify yourself, please? Yeah. Uh, my name's uh, Dr. Connie Butler. I um, own the property immediately behind uh, this property. Oh, at, Ms. Uh, Ms. Butler, uh, I think we're going to propose questions, I think, to the applicants at this point in time. Okay. Oh, I'm just introducing myself. Okay. Or, Very yeah. Good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, your your opportunity for for comment would would come a little bit later in in the, in the evening. Okay. Yes. So. Um, because you you're the neighbor, is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yes, absolutely. So we'll give you an opportunity to 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 speak and ask any questions in a few minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, and as I mentioned, any. Uh, the, to the extent the board has questions for the applicant, we'll proceed with that. I've got some questions, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> um, first of all, I think um, I think your rationale for sort of citing the house and, and the proposed footprint layout is, is pretty well thought out. I I, um, I see you're constrained and and clearly. Um, you're not increasing any nonconformity, so I can appreciate that. Um, just curious, it, there was mention of um, improving water drainage and erosion control on the site with with the layout. And it, just curious, are there existing drainage issues or erosion um, issues on the site? I think after chatting with Connie today, it sounds like there was some issues when this septic was put in. There was a septic put in, I think, in 98, and there was, it had to get mounted up, so I think there was some drainage that you may have had some issues with going to your site. Um, yeah, uh, that used to be um, pretty much um, uh, just a grassland and a wet uh, area, kind of swampy area through that whole back side of the property. Um, yeah, when we bought it within the 23 years. So we've seen the history of this. And uh, yeah, that was a uh, wetland, essentially. Right. Um, that goes into the, the area alongside the property is um, the land trust. Oh, right here. That, you know, 
So I think with I think we've talked, Sarah and I, we've talked about some potential storm drains in certain areas to collect the water and, and get it to the place that it needs to be. Um, but as well as dealing with it, maybe we can talk more about some of those issues. Okay. Well, there are dynamics that um, um, you know, gullying or, or open soil areas that are that are washing away. Um, it's a stable landscaped site. However, I, I try to encourage folks to um, get it to a better place, and usually that means some buffer plantings, um, because as you know, having lawn right to the water's edge isn't isn't ideal for um, for water quality, right? So I think these these folks have talked about wanting to do that, and that and they'd be happy to, to do the right thing. Great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> looking at that that corner up where the septic is, out, are there will there be any wetland impacts up there? No, no, because there's an existing septic system, and the replacement is because of its uh, you know more advanced technology actually about the same footprint, right? So there's no expansion of, of impact. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Other questions for the applicant? All right, hearing none then, we'll allow you folks to retake your seats. Okay. And, and ma'am, this would be the, the opportunity for you as, as an interested abutter to offer any comments or questions and, and just please step to the podium. Sorry for the interruption earlier. As I was saying, I'm Connie Butler, and uh, we've been living at Five Lawson Road, which is the property immediately behind this one. And uh, so uh, we've seen um, the uh, property through the expansions, and um, so we had some concerns first time around uh, when the property actually attained the current configuration. Uh, we um, figured, well, it's waterfront and there's so many restrictions we didn't have to think twice about it but it turned out that I'm not sure about how much uh, that expansion actually was um, in um, following the guidelines of the town as far as the size of the expansion and uh, what they did the current uh, septic system is on a mound and I think what uh, Kevin was referring to that we talked about today is that when that um, was mounded up we had like a little bit of water in our basement our house has always been on a slightly upward slope from this property but um, what happened when they built it up ours ended up being in a, um, a hollow because the other properties uh, around Lawson Road are all higher than ours and so um, we actually had to raise our property because we were getting very significant water since that uh, septic system was um, enlarged to be a uh, five bedroom septic. Uh, we actually started getting like a foot, two feet of water in our basement because of it. So we had to uh, regrade our property because of that. And so that's why, part of the reason why, you know, my husband and I are concerned um, currently. And so um, the other big thing, of course, is we're in Cape Elizabeth. We have an ocean, so it's uh, all about water views. And uh, you know, at the current time, we have a small little water view that runs along both sides of the house. In particular, as Kevin was saying, that one is really important to us uh, on the left side of this property because um, we get to see across uh, Pond Cove to the cliffs on the other side. And, um, the trees that um, were mentioned, um, yeah, I understand they have their big trees in the front of the house that they like, and they, they have no impact on us, no, no issue at all for us. Um, it's really that tree that was recently planted that sits in the middle of their driveway. It hasn't been there that long, and that um, it um, kind of gets into the electrical wires that are hanging right in it, and it's, um, it, it's really not... Um, 
uh, conducive to things. It blocks our water view along with the smaller bushes along there. And I guess um, Kevin tried to reach uh, Greg and Al Seaton today about it, but they're out of the country and uh, they're in New Jersey. And so I basically haven't even seen them this spring to uh, discuss any of these issues with them directly to get it kind of cleaned up before tonight's meeting. And I understand um, he won't be available till after this meeting is over to talk about you know the significance um, that it would have and hearing that um, it, this tree is considered crucial to the landscape project, then in fact the, the structure which we were willing to kind of go along with and everything, if we could just kind of clean up some of the landscape to solve our view issues, um, that it ends up being more significant now. Um, the fact that the building extends out this side kind of basically takes away our water view on that side, which, which was very small. Um, but having um, the structure go to a full two-story structure where it really is at best a one and a half now um, through most of you know, these uh, water view areas, um, that, that does take away our water view. So, you know, it kind of leaves us in an unhappy situation. And unfortunately, we weren't able to get it resolved before tonight's meeting. We were hoping that you know, it could be a give and takes uh, situation with um, the owners, but um, it doesn't look like we've been able to resolve that. Uh, so, um, you know, so we're a little wary of an eight bedroom structure being in a neighborhood where, I, to the best of my knowledge, the next house that approaches that is um, a four bedroom structure. Most of the, the um, houses um, in that Lawson Road, Seabon uh, area, are three bedrooms to, you know, the um, small colonials with four. So this is a very different structure for our neighborhood. So um, I think that's pretty much my concerns and you know, why I'm here tonight. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Does the board have any questions for Ms. Butler? <clears throat> if you wouldn't mind, could I, could I? So talking about views and, and landscaping, I, yeah, I understand. W would on the on the left side, on the driveway side, um, do you anticipate the new structure um, impeding existing views? Yeah, um, it, it will because again, the height um, coming out. Even though you know, and I appreciate the fact that you know it, they've kind of kept it along there because that's a really tight corridor. But um, that being a higher structure will, in fact, definitely take away our views. You know, for, you know it's going to be a big compromise there. And so, um, if I can move away from the mic. Sure. Um, so, you can see what we're thinking, that if we could kind of get rid of some of this greenery that, like I say, is not really, it hasn't been there that long. It's not, you know, that attractive, frankly, as far as I can tell. You can see that by giving up this part of the water view and this back here, then at least you know we got a chance of maintaining the water view through there. And I figured that way they get the house they want, which you know I think is a win. And, you know, um, and we at least you know have some uh, minimized impact. So I thought it was a good compromise. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions from the board for Ms. Butler? A absolutely. You know, I, I wish I'd known too that you were trying to get in touch because I would have been happy to meet you out there. And I hope this isn't the last, you know, opportunity we have to, to maybe work together on it because I think there's a lot you can do with a tree to limit up, um, you know, reduce the mass of the branches, and that's entirely allowable within the, within the uh, DEP shoreland um, zoning to uh, limb up a tree and thin it out, and that makes views a whole lot better. And we can talk about other hedges or sh shrubs or anything that is, you know, like a blob blocking your view. This, those things can be dealt with, um, so I hope we, can, hope we can work on that. I'd really like to. Um, and where I'm looking at the, you know, a, a one-story house, I, I appreciate that there's some sky, 
that one sees above it, but making the house higher doesn't actually take away water, it takes away sky. Um, so, yeah, we, we, you're, oh, come down with this. okay, so you're up high enough that you can see, see water over the top of it, so that would make a difference. But um, for the most part, you know, this, this, uh, this house is uh, the parts of it that are tall enough that, um, that it's mostly uh, the, by the sides that I appreciate. So I'd like to have a chance to work with you on the, on the landscape. That would be, uh, you know, would, would, make to, would work really hard to make that work for you. Thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, like I said, I was hoping that it would be resolved so right. our, our objections could be settled before this meeting. Sure. No, but I hope, I hope we have a chance to work on it. Thank you. Other comments from the public? Um, ben, did you receive any written submissions? I did not. Hearing no further comments then from uh, the applicant or from the public, we'll uh, go ahead and close this meeting to public comment and give the board an opportunity, opportunity to deliber deliberate on the application. I will have. <laughs> I feel like I'm Please do. Uh, dominating the here, but um, I, I appreciate the comments of Mrs. Butler. Was it? Yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't see any reason why um, you couldn't continue to work with the applicant on the on the landscape issue as well as the drainage issue. I think what we're reviewing here today, at least the way I see it, is um, sort of the footprint of of the house, not necessarily the you know, some of the, the trees or the landscaping. Um, and wh when I look at this, I look at the existing footprint and uh, the proposed footprint is remarkably similar. Um, and I think they've, they've sort of worked with a lot. They, they've taken, taken that corner of the existing garage out of the setback so that they've, they've made it less non-conforming um, sort of on that northeast corner. Um, on the on the on that eastern property line, the one where you have views, the house at least is is no farther um, east, um, and I, it doesn't sound like it's any it's going to be any higher. It certainly won't be. I don't think it'll be more stories in that location toward the front of the house. Um, it's the garage that's that's going up. So. Um, Again, I'm hopeful that, that you guys can work together and, and you can get what you're looking for and they can get what they're looking for. Um, but as far as, um, as far as this application goes, um, I'm, I, I would support it. I think I'd have to agree with that. I mean, I'm sensitive to, to uh, Mrs. Butler's concern, certainly. Uh, and I, I do hope that, that uh, you take those into uh, serious account uh, during the course of the landscaping that you do. Uh, it sounds like it's something that can be resolved through that landscaping. Um, and that being the case, uh, I agree. We're, we have something that's largely within the uh, original footprint, and I, I think it probably should go forward. Additional thoughts or comments? Uh, I guess I'll offer a brief comment. I, I agree with my fellow board members. Um, echo their concerns about possible view in, impacts. Encourage the applicants to, to work with uh, Ms. Butler. But I too feel as though the, the requirements of the ordinance are, are, are met. Uh, by this application, and, and I'm supportive of it as well. Uh, sounds like we're at the point where perhaps we can even make a formal motion um, based upon the feedback I've heard. Uh, sounds as though uh, I, as chair, might be wise to entertain a motion to approve uh, the request of Kevin Brown representing Gregory and Alice Eaton, owners of 5C Barn Road, 
to replace the existing non-conforming structure on the property based on uh, zoning ordinance section 19-4-4.b.3. Uh, Anybody care to make such a motion? I'll move. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the motion. And that is unanimous. We'll move on to uh, findings of fact. And I'll read into record the uh, proposed findings of fact. This is a request of Kevin Brown, representing the property owners Gregory and Alice Eaton, to reconstruct and expand a non-conforming single-family dwelling at 5 C Barn Road, map U08, lot 44, based on section 19-4-4.B.3 of the zoning ordinance. The subject lot is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone, and it is in the Shoreland Performance Overlay District. The Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system and other on-site soils suitable for septic systems, the impact on views, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. The proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure and the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical ex extent. Finally, the total amount of floor area and volume of the original structure cannot be relocated beyond the setback requirement for a new structure. So the proposed findings of fact, we have any... Uh... I just want to clarify. <coughs> This is a non-conforming lot, Ben? Yes. Okay. It's also a non-conforming structure, but... Yes. And whether or not we need to make that finding a fact as well, I, I don't know. But, um, and my other question is related to finding of fact number four. Can you comment on that? Ben, is that something out of the ordinance? I, I guess it's just confusing to me that the total amount of floor area and volume of the original structure cannot be re relocated beyond the setback requirement for a new structure. Yeah, that, that's a standard in that section of the ordinance. And we heard one of these about 14 months ago, and that was the major sticking point of the evening. Uh, and then we were rehearing that same application for five birch knolls. Oh, okay. And so I decided to make that a finding because it, it seemed to be a pretty important part okay. of this section of the ordinance. Other thing I'd mention is for additional finding number one, we might change the last word from relocation to reconstruction. Yep. Yes. So we have a, well, let's, uh, let's Work, work through this uh, logically here and in order. Uh, I've, I've presented the proposed findings of fact, um, and I'd like to entertain a motion to approve those proposed findings. So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Is that, is that moved as amended? Well, correct. So, yes, yes. yes. So, so we've got the second, and then uh, we have the proposed friendly amendment to change additional finding of fact one final word of that additional finding of fact one from relocation to reconstruction. So we'll consider that as a friendly amendment. Uh, any discussion on the proposed findings? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of the proposed findings with uh, said friendly amendment? That's unanimous. The findings carry. Uh, and that concludes our meeting this evening. We'll go ahead and adjourn. Thank you all for attending and participating. We appreciate it.